Hello and welcome to day three of your 14 day challenge. I'm Lacey, this is Arnold. And for practice today, I wanted to create a practice that was really about bringing balance into our bodies and into our minds. When we get really caught up in thinking a lot, it can feel like we're really out of balance. And for this practice, I encourage you to get out of thinking and to just really get into the flow of your movement. Hopefully this practice will inspire some creativity for you, bring some balance into your life and into your day and leave you feeling really great. Okay, let's get started. Begin in a comfortable seated position. Once you're comfy, close your eyes. Take a slow, deep inhale all the way down to your belly and take a slow exhale. Do that a few more times at your own pace. And as you breathe more slowly, you're signaling to your nervous system and to your body that it's okay to relax a little, to slow down. Let yourself settle into a rhythm of breathing that feels comfortable. Go ahead and open your eyes. Drop your chin down toward your chest and slowly roll your right ear toward your right shoulder. Then once your ear is hovering over your shoulder, you can use your right hand to add a little pressure onto the top side of your head. Extend your left arm out to the left, palm facing away from you, and as you stretch your palm away, tilt your head over and just create some length and a feeling of stretch from your ear all the way to your fingertips. Release your arm and slowly roll back to center. Then roll your left ear toward your left shoulder gradually. And once your ear is hovering, you might use your left hand on the top side of your head, just to add a little pressure and you can extend your right arm to the right, press your palm away and create some length between that right ear and your fingertips. Release that stretch and roll back to center. And you can bring your chin back up. And we're gonna switch to a kneeling position or Virasana. Now, if it's uncomfortable for you to sit kneeling, put something underneath your hips like a block or a pillow just to bring your body up a bit more. And that definitely makes it a lot more comfortable on your knees and your ankles. Once you're sitting in Virasana, Extend your arms forward and wrap your right arm underneath your left arm. You can bend your elbows and continue to wind your arms around so that your palms come toward each other or together like you would for eagle pose. Or wrap your arms around and just place your hands right onto your shoulder blades and just notice how your shoulders, how your neck, and how your elbows feel in this position. It should be pretty comfortable. You can play around with lifting your elbows or lowering them. And just take a few deep breaths. Release that. 
and switch to the other side. Wrap your left arm under. You can wind your palms around or you can hold on to your shoulders. Play around with lifting or lowering your elbows as you like. Unwind that stretch, take your arms all the way up, interlace your hands, flip your palms toward the ceiling and stretch up. You can keep your neck pretty neutral, but lengthen upward through your arms. Release your arms down and take your arms back behind you. Place your palms together, either pointing downward with your fingertips, or if you want to increase the intensity, you can turn your fingertips to point more upward. Just be mindful of your wrists. Release your arms, maybe give them a little shake. Give your shoulders a roll. And let's come over onto hands and knees. Once you're on hands and knees, engage your core muscles in so that your back stays nice and flat. And keep that strong, extend your right leg back behind you and extend your opposite left arm forward. Now keeping the flat back, Bend your elbow and your knee and take them out to the side. So your left arm's going out to the left and your right knee is going toward the right. Hold there for a sec and then bring it back to center. Do it again, out to the side and back to center. Do that twice more, out to the side and back to center. Once more, out to the side and back to center. Release your hand and your knee to the floor. Maintain that flat back and go over to the opposite side. Left leg stretches back, right arm stretches forward. Bend your elbow and knee and take them out to the side. Inhale back through center and exhale out to the side. Inhale back through center and exhale out to the side. One more time, back to center and exhale out to the side. Come back to center and release your hand to the floor. From hands and knees, curl your toes under and just ease back into downward dog. Let your hips draw up high and slowly shift the weight back into your feet. We'll stay a little longer in this first downward dog, so bring in any movement that you like and emphasize a slow and steady breath while you're here in the pose. From downward dog, take small steps to the top end of your mat and arrive here in a forward fold, just relaxing your neck and shoulders. Take a few breaths to fold forward.
With your knees slightly bent, slowly bring your spine all the way up to standing. Just take some time to get grounded as you come up to the top. Feel your feet, strong legs, core strength. Nice and tall through your crown. All right, from here, inhale, stretch your arms up and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up to a flat back. Exhale, lower your hands, step back to plank pose. As you come to plank pose, stretch your chest a little bit forward, lift your abdominals in, bring your right knee toward your right arm, and step back. Try to keep your back really flat as you do this. Bring your left knee toward your left arm and step back. So you're maintaining the plank, right knee, right arm. Step back, left knee, left arm. Step back, let's do one more of each, right knee. Step back, left knee. Step back, lower your knees down and lower for five, four, three, two, and one. Just land right onto your belly, slide your hands back a little bit and peel your chest up into cobra, engage your back muscles and your glute muscles and just linger in cobra. From Cobra, exhale, lower your chest. Bring yourself back to all fours and then to downward facing dog. From downward dog, step or hop all the way up to the top. Inhale to half lift and exhale to fold. As you inhale, rise all the way up, reaching up. Exhale, release your arms. You're just coming back to standing. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, lower your hands, step back into high plank, and this time lower down through chaturanga. So you can lower from your toes or from your knees. You can come down halfway or all the way to the ground. From there, lift into cobra, or you might come all the way up into upward facing dog. Exhale back into downward dog. From downward dog, step or hop all the way up. Inhale to half lift and exhale to fold. Now this time, sit back into chair pose, bend your legs, engage your core, reach up with your arms. Press through your feet and sit back into the strength of your leg muscles. From chair pose, exhale, fold forward. Inhale to a flat back. Plant your palms. Exhale, step back. Lower down through your chaturanga, halfway or all the way from your knees or toes. Inhale to upward dog or cobra. Exhale back to downward dog. 
step your right foot between your hands, come up into warrior one, angle your back foot at about 45 degrees as you come up, press through both legs, reach your arms up high. Press really strong from the back side of your leg muscles, so think glute muscles, hamstrings, even your calf, pushing down into the floor. Both feet are really rooted. Tone some strength in your core muscles and reach long through your fingertips. From warrior one, exhale, plant your hands. Inhale, step back into plank. Exhale, lower halfway or all the way down through chaturanga. Inhale, cobra pose or upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Step your left foot between your hands. Come up into warrior one on that left side. Find the strength in your legs, just like we did on the last side. Add some strength in your core. And then dig into your breath. So the breath is adding some fuel to the posture. Exhale, plant your hands. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Just linger here for a few breaths. Then from downward dog, step or hop to the top. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Sit back into chair pose, bend your legs. Inhale, reach up. And this time, stand all the way up. Exhale, release your arms. Let's go back to chair pose. Bend your legs, inhale, reach up and then fold forward, exhale. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your palms, step back, and lower down through chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Step your right foot between your hands, come up into warrior one. Now we're gonna add the eagle arms like we did earlier when we were in seated. Start by crossing your left arm under your right arm. You can wind your hands around or hug your shoulders. Stay grounded through your feet, but feel free to lift or lower the elbows to a comfortable height. Unwind your arms, give your arms a little shake here, and then bring your hands onto hips. Turn onto the ball of your back foot and lengthen your torso forward so your weight's going into this front leg. Bend your back knee a bit and press slowly off of those back toes so you step into your right leg, lift your left leg up behind you toward hip height. Keep your core engaged, but another tip is to roll that left hip down so it's more level with the right hip. At the same time, engage up into both of your hips by really pressing through your legs. If you want, play around with reaching back like airplane wings. From here, slowly stand all the way up. Just release your foot to the top of your mat. Maybe give that a little shake. Take a deep breath. Now 
Bend your knees, sit back into chair pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to half lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back. Lower down through your chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Step your left foot between your hands. Come up into warrior one on your left side. Adding those eagle arms. This time, wrap your right arm under your left. Wind your hands around or hands onto shoulders. Unwind your arms, maybe give them a little shake. Bring your hands onto hips and turn onto the ball of your back foot. Shift your torso forward and as you bring your weight into your front leg, bend your back knee a little and slowly press off of those right toes to step forward into your left leg. Bring your right leg up to about hip height. Roll your right hip down to level and engage your core in so that you're not feeling a sway in your lower back. You might add the airplane arms, reaching your arms back, adding a little more strength from your triceps and the backside of your shoulders. I'd stand all the way up, just release that, give it a little shake. Again, sit back into chair pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Step back and lower down through Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Bring your right foot to the top. Let's go into that warrior one once more. Plant your back heel, bring your arms up. Add your eagle arms, wrapping your left arm underneath your right arm. So we've done this a few times already. Let's add a little more to it. Keeping your eagle arms, lengthen your torso forward. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot. Shift your weight into your front leg. You're gonna slowly press off of those back toes. Step into your right leg. Raise your left leg up. So this time you're keeping the eagle arms. That's gonna be more challenging for your balance. So don't worry about it if you fall over. It's okay, you can always get back into it. Now still keeping the eagle arms, start to stand up and this time we're going to bring the left knee forward and up, bend your standing leg and cross your left leg over top of your right leg. Imagine that you're sitting cross-legged in a chair so you're going to sit back bending that standing leg. Take a few more breaths here. All right, now as you unwind, lean forward and stretch your left leg all the way back. Let's step right back into that warrior one where we began. Unwind and stretch up. And then plant your hands. You can choose to step back to take a vinyasa or take down or dog for a few extra breaths. Then step your left foot to the top, come up into warrior one. 
Add your eagle arms wrapping your right arm under your left. Lean your torso forward, keeping those eagle arms and pivot onto the ball of your back foot. Take your weight forward into your left leg and slowly press off of your right toes. As you step into that left leg, gradually raise your right leg up, keeping the eagle arms in this balance. So that's gonna make it more challenging. You're gonna be working really hard through your legs, through your core, plus you're also getting that opening in the shoulders. Let's begin to stand up. As you do, bring your right knee up in front of you, bend your standing leg, and wrap your right leg over, starting to sit back. Imagine a chair, you're sitting your hips back, squeezing your inner thighs together. Going in reverse, unwind your leg, stretch it back behind you, step back, unwind your arms, stretch your arms up, and then exhale, plant your hands, and you decide you can step back to take a vinyasa or take it straight to down dog. In Downward Dog, take your thumbs together, look forward at your hands, and you're either going to step or hop around your hands. And what this will do is it'll land you in squat position so you can start to lower your hips downward from here. If you're pretty comfortable squatting down, you can bring your palms together. To add support, place something like a block underneath your hips to just lift your body up and make this a little more comfortable. From squat pose, we'll transition to a lizard lunge. So to do this, just bring your hands down. You can let your hips lift up. And we're gonna keep the hands where they are and just step your left foot all the way back. So your hands are gonna to be to the inside of your right foot. And you can place a block or two blocks under your hands if you'd like. Now in this lunge, hug your inner thighs toward each other so you feel some strength and a lift at your hips. Engage your core in and lengthen your back. And just hold the strength of your legs for a few breaths. Relax your back knee down onto the floor. And you can allow your front leg, your right leg, to turn slightly outward or even roll outward onto the edge of your foot. Bring your right hand over onto your right leg and just take a little twist toward the right. Now another option here is to bend your back leg. You can start by holding this strength with your hamstrings and then reach back with your right arm toward your foot. If the foot is within reach, take hold of it and draw it toward you. I find that using a block can be really helpful to bring your hand closer to your foot. Gently release that stretch. Take yourself back around to center. You can bring your right toes and your right knee back to center as well. Let yourself go a little bit more forward. So you might start by leaning down onto an elbow or both elbows. 
or even just bring yourself a little closer to the mat, just gently bowing forward. See if that changes any of the sensation in the hips. Bring yourself back up and we're gonna go back to squat to transition to the other side. So you can move your hands close together, tuck your back toes under and lift your back knee. Step your left foot up and around your left pinky finger and then step your right foot back. And you'll be in your lizard lunge on the left side. Again, feel free to add in some props underneath your hands. Engage strength upward into the hip joints. It almost feels like you're squeezing your inner thighs toward each other or pulling your thigh bones into the hip socket. Lower your back knee down. As you twist toward the left, you can play around with angling this left foot or rolling onto the edge of the foot. Bring your left hand over to your left leg and turn toward the left. And then option to bend your back leg. This is opening up the front side of the thigh, so especially your quad muscles. You can reach back with your left arm, take hold of the foot, or if the foot's not in reach, just reach toward it. Release that coming back around to center. Just bring your knee and your toes back towards center. And then just go a little more toward the mat. You can lean down onto one or both elbows or even just let yourself bow gently forward. Bring yourself back up. We're gonna go back to that squat position one more time. Bring your hands close together to the inside of your left foot. Tuck your back toes under, lifting up your back knee, and then step your right foot up and around your right pinky finger. So you're in that general squat position. You can adjust to bring your hips all the way down into Malasana, your squat once again. You can linger in Malasana for a little bit longer or start to set up for Bakasana, your arm balance. Plant your hands down on the mat and let your hips come up a little bit higher. Place your knees onto the backs of your arms and wiggle your knees up closer to your armpits so you're making a nice little shelf with your triceps. Shift your weight forward into your hands, grip the mat with your fingers and squeeze inward with your elbows, your knees, and of course your core. Then maybe start to bring your feet up off of the mat, hugging your heels closer to your hips. Take some time to play around with your arm balance if you're working on it. I have a video explaining how to do Bakasana. I'll link that down below in the description box. And once you're done, you can return back to your squat position and we're gonna meet up in a forward fold. So just let your hips come up. You can bring your feet to about hip distance apart. Bend a little more into your knees, relax your neck and shoulders. And if you want, you can slide your hands underneath your feet to go into Pada Hastasana. As you do this, you can bend your knees as much as you like, 
bring a little pressure into your palms, just massaging your palms with your feet gently. Slowly release your palms. With your knees slightly bent, gradually bring yourself all the way up. Find your way back to standing and just let yourself feel, once again, your feet grounding, your spine tall. We'll move into a standing balance pose next. Starting from a nice, tall, grounded position, bring your arms overhead and then take your right arm back behind you. As you do this, bend up your right leg behind you and you're reaching back for your foot. Now, if there's a wall handy and you find that you're losing your balance a lot, you can just hold on to a wall while you're practicing this. So you're practicing taking hold of the foot or your ankle from the inside. And you can notice how my palm faces outward. That's giving me more rotation in the shoulder. That's gonna open up the shoulder a little bit more here as well. Once you get comfortable with grabbing hold of the foot, you've got a nice strong grip. Squeeze into your glute muscles so that you're opening the hip joint on the front side. So we want these hip flexors to open up on that right hip. Then begin to drive your foot back and upward using your glute muscles to raise the foot. As your foot draws upward, gently lengthen forward, creating a balance between your foot pressing back and your left arm stretching forward. Now you wanna to go to a place where you feel effort, but you can still breathe where you don't feel any strain in your back. And even if you fall out of the pose, you've got some time to get back into it, to try it again. So don't be hard on yourself if you lose your balance. That's definitely part of practicing any balance pose. All right, let's slowly release that. Take a few breaths in standing, just to relax your muscles, to shake that off. All right, for the other side, let's take arms up. Reach your left arm back behind you. Bend your left leg behind you. Use your left hand to take hold of the foot. And again, maybe you're using a wall to lean on just to give you a little extra support. Engage your glute muscles so we're opening the front side of that left hip really nicely. And as you press your foot back, Start to lengthen forward and drive the sole of that left foot toward the ceiling. Find an intensity level that challenges you but gives you enough space to breathe. That doesn't put strain or pain in your body, especially your back and your hips and hamstrings. And that allows you to maintain the focus of your gaze. Come out of the pose slowly, shake that off, just standing tall. Turn toward the left so you're facing the long edge of your mat and step your feet out wide. Open your arms, you'll be in five pointed star. Turn your right foot toward the top end of your mat and rotate your left foot in slightly. So you'll be in position to set up for triangle pose or trikonasana. Reach a little forward over that right leg and then bring your right hand down onto your shin or your thigh or grab a block and place your hand onto the block. Send your left arm up toward the ceiling, reaching long through your fingertips. 
Press through your feet into the floor. Take your time, bend into your front knee a bit, bring yourself back up slowly, relax your arms, and turn your right foot back in so you're facing back toward that left edge of your mat. With your hands onto hips, soften your knees, and fold forward, hinging right from your hips. Lower your hands down onto your mat or onto a block out in front of you. And if you want, you can walk your hands further back in between your feet. Then just relax your neck and shoulders. Come up to your fingertips to lengthen. Bend your knees a little bit here. You can slowly bring your hands up onto your hips and gradually rise up using the strength of your legs. Then extend your arms back out to the sides and this time turn your left foot toward the back end of your mat. Turn your right toes in slightly and reach a little forward with your left side, bringing your left hand down onto your left shin or thigh for your triangle pose or trikonasana. Left hand might go on a block and your right arm's reaching up to the sky. Looking downward, bend your front knee slightly and come up slowly. Turn your left foot in and we're gonna fold forward once again and this time you might take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers together and as you fold forward, just let your knuckles gently lengthen back. If you're finding that doesn't feel good on your shoulders, you can always bring your hands onto your lower back and squeeze your elbows inward and that'll give you a similar opening for your chest and shoulders. Release your hands down onto the mat, turn toward the top of your mat, walk your hands all the way around. As you face toward the top, step back with your right leg you can decide to go through a vinyasa or go to downward facing dog. Then we'll meet in child's pose. Lower your knees to the mat, open up your knees a little wider and just stretch back. Let your breathing become a nice steady pace. Slowly move forward onto all fours and bring yourself all the way down onto your belly. Once on your belly, 
bring your right arm into a cactus position on the floor beside you. So it's gonna be at a nice right angle to start with. You're placing that on the floor. You can place your right cheek down on the mat as well. And as we go into this stretch, do feel free to adjust your right arm if necessary. It should feel really comfortable as we gradually move into the stretch. You can start by rolling a little bit at a time onto your right hip. This will create a twist essentially from your shoulder to your opposite left hip. And as you're rolling onto that right hip, you'll probably feel that the intensity increases. So keep it at a pretty moderate place. If you do want more intensity, you can lift up this top leg and step it back behind you. And that's definitely gonna add more to the stretch. But again, because we're going to stay here a little bit longer, you do want to keep the intensity a bit lower. Once you've settled into the pose, take slow, steady breaths. Gently roll back to center, slide your right arm into a relaxed position and set up your left arm in that 90 degree bend. Place your left cheek onto the mat and you can start to roll a little bit at a time onto your left hip if you need to add more intensity. Now you might find that you don't actually need to add that much intensity, especially some days if your shoulders are feeling a little more stiff or if you've done a workout recently that included push-ups or something that really engaged those chest muscles, then you might not actually be going very far onto that left hip to get a stretch. So find that nice moderate place, let yourself relax and breathe. Roll yourself back to center, gently draw your left arm in, and very slowly bring yourself onto all fours. Once you get to your hands and knees, rotate your hands around so that your fingers are pointing backward toward your knees or outward to the sides, just depending on how your wrists feel. I like to bend my elbows a little so I'm not hyperextending. And you can choose to linger or lean a little bit back to intensify the stretch. You can also go forward and back gently, just being really mindful of how this feels for your wrists.
Coming back to center, turn your hands back around to neutral. Sit back either to your heels or onto a block. And we're going to turn the hands so the palms face up. Gently place the backs of your hands onto the mat. I'm doing this with very minimal pressure, but if it feels too intense, just do one at a time. Very, very mild pressure so that your wrist can go in the opposite direction of what we've been doing for the most part in class. Because a lot of yoga involves us being right onto our palms, whether it's plank or downward dog. So we're taking this in the opposite direction. And then just slowly sit back, maybe do a few circles or a little movement with your wrists. Come slightly forward and slide your knees and your feet in together so that you're able to tuck your toes under on the mat. And you're just going to ease some pressure back toward your heels. You'll start to feel a little stretch in your toes and your feet. So for me, I get quite a bit of intensity going about this far back, but I know for some of you, it feels good to lean further back and to go upright. Just make sure that you're not putting a lot of weight on the toe joints, like it kind of feels like you're pushing them down into the mat. You want to create some openness and space in the joints. You don't want to make them feel too compressed or stiff. Come forward onto your palms, untuck your feet, and it might feel really good just to tap your feet on the mat a few times. With your new hands and feet, go into downward dog gently. In downward dog, bring your right leg up and bend your knee and slide your right knee forward onto the mat to set up in a pigeon position. You can slide your left leg back behind you. You can use a block underneath your hips, which I find feels quite nice. Or another variation that I really like is to sit over on that right hip, bend your back leg and bring both your front leg and your back leg into 90 degree angles. You also want to flex your foot so your ankle joint forms a 90 degree angle as well. In any of those variations, you can sit upright or let yourself slowly lean forward. Slowly bring yourself up onto your palms and we'll gently shift back into downward facing dog. Then raise your left leg, bend your knee and draw it forward, placing it down on the mat and just set yourself up in any of those variations that you found really worked for you on the right side.
bring yourself up onto your palms and this time sit over onto your left hip swing your legs around so that you come to a seated position elongate your legs out in front of you and you can have your knees a little bit bent here if you like reach up with your arms and stretch over your legs, taking hold of your feet or your ankles or even resting your hands on the mat. Relax your neck and shoulders. Slowly bring your spine all the way up and let's come down onto our backs. As you lay back, curl your knees into your chest. You can either hug your knees in, maybe rolling around on your lower back, or take hold of the soles of your feet for happy baby pose. Letting go of your feet, bend your knees, and twist your knees over to the left hand side. As your knees twist left, open your right arm to the right. Bring your twist back through center and twist your knees over to the right. Extend your left arm toward the left. Roll back to center, release your feet down, and stretch all the way out into a comfortable position for Shavasana.
and start to bring some movement back through your body. And eventually take your arms all the way overhead into a nice big stretch. Bend into both knees and roll yourself over onto one side. And bring yourself all the way up to seated. I hope this practice leaves you feeling balanced, maybe tapping a little more into your creativity and ultimately feeling really great. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.